Brethren, pray the Lord. God has been good to us. He gives us opportunities all the time. As long as we are still alive, to praise him, to thank him, and to look up for examples, examples that can lead us into the arena of finding God. And so um, in, this pro in this program, in these episodes, we've been looking at biblical figures, biblical figures that can impact our lives positively, and so that we can live to appreciate God and to glorify his name because we are the righteousness of God. And so we have been looking at some biblical figures, we have looked at the men, but also looking at the women now. Um, the women of the Bible, we have looked at the Old Testament women and have given several examples. And so we jump into the New Testament and we look at one or two women that impact our lives, that impact our lives so that we can live uh, in a, a way that God wants us to live. And of course, all of us need to be blessed. And of course, all of us need to learn lessons that draw us closer. The reason why uh, this, in these episodes, we are doing finding God. And this is the whole purpose. And so in the New Testament, you have several women that when you read the Bible, you will find a number of women. But of course, we begin with a woman like Elizabeth. We have Mary, the mother of Jesus. We have Martha and Mary. All those are the names, the prominent women. And when I was looking through, there, are, there is a woman called Anna. She was a prophetess. And when they, were, when they brought the baby Jesus to the, temp, to the, to the place of worship, she blessed, she blessed the, the baby and made proclamations. And so people like that. You find that actually they are very, very impactful women. And also have young ones like Rhoda, a young lady, when you read the Acts of the Apostles. We have Dorcas. We have another one, a prominent business, successful business, businesswoman in the Bible called Lydia. We have Priscilla. We have Phoebe. We have Lois and Eunice, a number of them. And so these women, these biblical figures, have great lessons that they teach us, really. But for this purpose, let's go dive deeper into the life of a woman called Elizabeth. Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. Elizabeth, the wife to a priest called Zechariah. And Elizabeth, the woman of faith, because the Bible talks about these two, Zechariah and Elizabeth, both old and had not been able to give children. Both of them were barren. And the Bible is full of the examples of people like that. And when we read them, there are examples that there are lessons that we pick from there. And now let us just jump into this portion. Um, Luke chapter 1 verse 5. In the time King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. Uh, his wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron, both of them. Now, verse 6 is the point I'm making here. Both of them were upright to the sight of, in the sight of the Lord, observing all the Lord's commandments and regulations blamelessly. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well on in years, meaning that both of them were old. Remember the biblical examples of Abraham, old but childless. Abraham and his wife, Sarah. And there's another one, Manoah and his wife, both old and childless. Now here, the New Testament figure, Elizabeth and Zechariah, both old and childless. But now, the angel of the Lord comes to Elizabeth, to Zechariah, the husband, at the time when he was offering an offering in the place of worship. Now here, the angel proclaims a message that his wife, Elizabeth, in their oldness, in their old nature, in their elderly years, that were going to have a child. Now, the point is, these two were blameless before God. And there are lessons that we pick from here that actually, you know, even when there are challenges in our life, we can remain blameless. Even when there are, you know, issues that can derail us, you know, childlessness, you know, barrenness can be a very huge, is a huge, huge dilemma in the lives of very many, many people. But these people, show us that even when they lacked something, they remained blameless and righteous before God. And so Elizabeth and Zechariah give us an example and we need to dive deeper and dig deeper in their life and see how they live their life. And of course the Bible will give us a lot of instruction, a lot of guidance and about that. But of course there are lessons that we pick from 
especially the woman, because both of them, if it was not, not only one, but Elizabeth was, and Zechariah was, and, praise, and they praised the Lord, then they both belonged to a priestly family. Now, we discover something that actually God does in the life of a believer here, that actually, even in whatever, even if when there is a lack, even when there is a challenge of having nothing, we still remain to believe that God is the provider God, that God is Jehovah Jireh, and because actually he always provides, and he provided for this holy couple, and even in that holy age, the Bible says that they had children, and they had a child, and the child that came was John the Baptist, and it was actually the message that came to Zechariah, that actually when he went back, when you read and finish up that, that chapter, Zechariah went back home, and the Bible mentions actually his wife became pregnant, and while she was pregnant, you know, Mary comes, and it's the next figure that we'll be talking about. But here, we think, we see God, the provider God, providing for this old couple, and it's something that actually we pick as believers today, that challenges shouldn't separate us from the way of the Lord. That even when there is lack, even when there is poverty, even when there is whatever it is, Zechariah and Elizabeth give us an example that they never departed from the way of the Lord. And so one other thing is, you see this woman, old woman, actually was six months pregnant and Mary comes, whom shall, we shall going to talk about the next time. Now Mary comes when she also received the similar news and when she came, she proclaimed to Elizabeth that she was the mother, she was going to be the mother of the Lord. Of course, the revelation had already been made. But when Mary visited Elizabeth, both of them were talking together, encouraging one another, speaking the language of thank you God for what you have done for us. Now, these are the blessings that when God blesses this one and blesses another one, both of you meet, mean you need to praise the Lord, you need to bless the Lord for what God has done for you. Talking about things that bless one another. So another person is blessing to bless another person. And so how do you respond? when God blesses you and you meet another person. And of course, we're living in a world of competition. There are some people who, when they gate, they don't want other people to gate. But look at these two women, Elizabeth, pregnant six months, and Mary comes also receiving the news of surprise. And both of them talk about great things that the Lord had done for them. Now, we applaud people that talk together when both of you are successful and you talk about uh, things that are good as you praise God, you uplift God's name. So these two blessed each other. Now, because when Elizabeth received Mary, he proclaimed like in verses 42 to 45, and so, so he said, blessed are you among the women and blessed is the child you'll bear, you see? I mean, this, is, this was a great, great, great message that I received that Mary received a blessing from, the Bible talks about them as a related, that they, they had a relation, some other people called them cousins, and they were talking about great things that the Lord had given them. So Mary received the praise both from human beings and from God. And so how I pray for you, that other people say, blessed are you. But also, because actually, they will say, blessed are you, when God has blessed you. And this is the, what, the message that I gather from here, that actually we talk about blessing, God blesses you, and fellow human beings also bless you. And you see the multiplicity, and you see the, in the abundance that is in the, in the presence of the Lord. So I take it heartily that as these people were blessed and they kept blessing each other, Elizabeth shows us, and she blesses Mary, blessed are you among all the women. And so how I pray for all the mothers, when you meet, talk about things that build each other, including the men and all of us in the, actually, as we try to find God in our lives. And so that is actually very, very important. And one other thing is, we remember from these two people, as we turn towards the finish, is that God will always keep his promises. Truly so, because okay, I've looked at some other biblical figures. I've looked at Abraham, I've looked at Isaac, I've looked at Jacob, I've looked at Joseph, I've looked at those old, old Testament people. Hannah, the woman that had been pre, I mean, uh, barren, but we discover 
from all these journeys that God keeps his promises and therefore God keeps his promises and therefore we too, you and I, are called upon to keep our oaths, to keep our promises that also make because God is a promise keeper and therefore we too must be promise keepers. Now, Elizabeth knew that, Sarah knew that, Rachel knew that, Hannah knew that, Manoah knew that, and God fulfills his promise. And so in this year, as it winds up to 2022, of course, yes. And as we, you know, as we keep moving on, we shall enter into 2023, yes, which will. And I know when we get there, we shall look back and say, yes, we were once upon time in 2022, but God keeps his promises. And so friends, God indeed keeps his promises, and may he keep the promises that he's making for you. And this is something actually that I desire that God, that whatever he has kept for me comes to pass. And when may whatever God has kept for you comes to pass because God is a promise keeper and he fulfills them. And these testimonies that we receive from God's people in New Testament, Old Testament, they teach us, they encourage us, they enlighten us. And so it is the same thing that actually we're also aligning ourselves. It's just a matter of us aligning ourselves to the will of God. And when he promises, he will fulfill for us. And we also know that when we are blessed, we must bless other people. Whenever there's an opportunity, be a blessing to another person. Now, these two ladies, Elizabeth, proclaim the blessing upon her fellow. Yes, the Bible talks about blessing and not cursing. It's God's work. When we read Genesis chapter 12, he proclaims to Abraham that you'll become a blessing and through you all the nations over the earth shall be blessed. Yes. And then he also says that I will curse those that curse you. Now God does his work, remember, in, as we read in Genesis chapter 12. Now, just continue being a blessing in your family. Continue being a blessing at your workplace. And I've said this before and I'll keep saying it that it doesn't cost you anything to be nice to other people like Elizabeth was nice to her fellow. Even when the babies were going to be, one was going to be one preparing the way for the other. Of course, Elizabeth was going to produce a baby that would be prepared prepare a way for the Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning that Mary was going to be a little bit higher because Jesus was the savior coming. And, but these people blessed each other. And therefore, my slogan will always remain, and I say it again, you are blessed to bless, encouraged to encourage, taught to teach, mentored to mentor, given to give, and all those that may God stand with you. And from Elizabeth, we gather this, that actually she mentioned it to Mary, blessed are you among women. And it is the proclamation that I'm looking for this season that God blesses us. And through the blessing that he gives us, he also bless another person that will be seeing what you do, will be hearing what you say, will be, you know, everything that's around you, be it in your family, be it in your uh, workplace, be it anywhere, but just move, aligning yourself in the presence of the Lord. And Elizabeth, when they, they met, her blessing led Mary to praise the Lord, to praise God in her song. And her song is called Magnificat. And this is the point that we too, when you bless another person, we break into praise, we break into worship. And may God, who has started this, continue it, finish it. Remembering that our God is a God of miracle. He performed the miracles then and we believe that he still performs miracles in our lives. Yes, even when you sleep and you wake up in the morning, that's another miracle that you need to take very seriously because we die a bit and you wake up. It's a miracle. You get away, you come back. God gives us life and God is a miracle worker God. And let us continue in the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord, so says Nehemiah, in chapter 8, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so I pray for you, that God strengthens you, that God strengthens me. This woman, Elizabeth, teaches us great things that her and her husband remained blameless in the sight of the Lord. 
and you who are married people pick a leaf from Elizabeth and leave blamelessly both of you husband and wife praying together sharing together laughing together eating together doing everything together now whatever comes like in Zechariah's life and Elizabeth they had no child but they remained blameless now whatever challenge that comes entrust your life to God and I pray that God who starts the good good things in your life accomplishes them because God is a promise keeper and I'm believing very very confidently that God will fulfill our promises as we continue moving on finding him and him finding us and aligning ourselves to the will of God because in the presence of the joy in the presence of the Lord there is fullness 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 of joy may God bless you that may you enjoy the the fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord amen <music>